avoiding the struggle. Stop avoiding the struggle. Embrace the pain. On the other side of your pain is every answer you'll ever seek. Think about my trip. Think about it. Seven months in AdSeg after getting busted, thinking I was going to bail out, realizing I had no bail. Then losing at trial, losing at trial with an exposure of 28 years, doing 10 of those years, 10, and then going straight to the pen. The first 15 minutes off that prison bus, someone got straight up stabbed in the cages, straight up stabbed in the cages, first 15 minutes, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is gonna be a long ass ride. I was only 25 at the time. I wasn't who I am now. I wasn't. It was all new to me. You can't expect to be someone you're not in a brand new place. You have to learn that place, grow with that place, adopt its positive attitudes, adopt the positivity you can from it, even from a negative place. The positive sides of it was the strength you could gain from being in such a negative place and choosing a positive attitude. Choosing positive actions when everything around you was so negative. Now going through all that, that whole time was so crazy. All these bus rides, trans packs. The second you get comfortable around some people and you're like, okay, this is pretty cool. I can take this. That's when they move you. Then you got to go somewhere else. And you can't refuse a bed move. They can put you anywhere, put you in some drama, right into some drama that ends your life and leaves you in prison for life. Are you ready for that? The second I was ready to commit to the prison life, because for the first five years in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm not putting in fucking work for you motherfuckers. Not the first five, probably the first two or three years, I was still putting in work, but I didn't want to. I wasn't for it. Later, I saw what we had to do. I saw the vision. I saw how it saved people. So it was a must. But you can't fucking just adopt this without seeing the drama and the reasons behind it. That's why a lot of you guys can't understand the racial politics, the prison politics, the the politics on the child molesters. That's why a a lot of you guys can't understand it. You haven't been around it. So I don't expect you to. So it doesn't do anything to me except I just say, hey, I don't know how to drive NASCAR, so they don't know how to go to prison. That's it. That's as simple as I keep it. I think about all the stuff I don't know and I don't understand. That's it. Knowledge is knowing it's a one-way street. Wisdom is seeing it from all directions. You don't have to know everything. You don't know anything about lockdowns. You miss your mom. You miss your people because you haven't seen them all month because they usually come out on Sundays. I didn't see my mom for 10 years. 10 years. The first time I saw a picture of my mom after being down was seven years in. She sent me a fucking picture. She sent me a picture of her in a dress because she was excited that she was going to a wedding. And her face had gotten so wrinkled over the time I had been gone that, that it sank in how fucking long I've been gone. And you motherfuckers don't fucking know. So... Don't ever do this to your people. Why do you think I talk about my people so much? This is what fueled me every day. I'm not letting you guys down. I don't care what it takes. I'm not letting my wife down. I'm not letting my son down. I don't care what it takes. Now my mom is going through the same shit with my brother. He was finally getting his shit straight. He just got back out. He was staying with my grandma and my mom at the same house in that same bed that I showed that video. That's how my family is. We're not rich. We don't have it. We just got love. We got support. My parents are still together. I love them. And they tried to bring my brother back in, even though he fucks with that meth and he drinks a lot. They tried to save him. And he'd been doing good. He'd been doing good. He's not fucking even trying to go back to that life. He's trying to change his life. But guess what? My same parole officer, my same one, he's not a bad guy. He had to come pull the leash on my brother, tell him, you got to go back, homie. You got to go back. And he sat in the fucking street and he cried. You guys aren't ready, dude. You think you're fucking tough? You're going to lose your life. You can't even stick to a workout and a meal plan. You can't even do this lockdown. And I don't expect you to. Nobody's ready for the penitentiary. Motherfuckers die. It's the coldest world ever. 
I seen an old man who just wanted his meds on a lockdown. He kept going to get his meds too much. Cops didn't like it. He was old. They labeled him a dope fiend like everybody does if you have tattoos and you're saying you have some sort of pain. They're like, oh, he must be trying to get pain meds because he's a dope fiend. And so what if he was, okay? He was older. They locked him in the shower night after night after night until he finally died two weeks later. They don't care. You're a bag of meat. You ain't shit. You're nothing. They'll take you the fuck out. Everybody will. The people in there are fucking cold. They ain't getting out. They're not. You don't want any part of this. So now my mom is having to deal with this with my brother and she calls me for wisdom. She says, Wes, you always have the best way to look at this shit. Tell me something. I'm like, mom, you did everything you can. We're gonna make it right. I'm gonna make it right. I got you guys. We don't have to worry about the small shit no more. We just have to worry about our hearts, our character, our conduct, and staying in line with the people we wanna be. Only time in this life when you willingly give up your life, your time, your feeling, your heart is when you willingly break character. Then you're stuck to that moment, that regret that ensues. You did that. When you get up and conduct yourself correct every day, even if you're in a box by yourself, you feel great. I've been there. I fucking love you guys. I would not come on here and continually tell you and show you that it's real. It's real. You ain't ready. So now my mom had to see my brother cry in the street handcuffed when he was doing good. And then she calls me and she's like, it was so bad. He's going through so much pain. Good. Good. You all need the pain. You need it. If you're still fucking up, I look for the pain. If you're having levels of success and you're not self-inflicting adversity, self-inflicting pain on yourself, you're never going to make it. You're going to start pleasure seeking for that, for that fulfillment and it never fulfills you. So you have to inflict that adversity in your life. The top successful people will run ultra marathons. They'll work out super crazy. Their diets are flawless because they need that. They need that adversity. They succeeded in the other areas except internal. That's why we have to fucking limit ourselves, control ourselves. The weakest point of a man is when he is out of control. When a man is out of control, that is pure weakness. I've been there. It's helpless. It's hopeless. It's pain. It's fucking going downhill so quick. It don't even matter if you're in the gutter. If you're looking at the stars, I had the biggest dreams. I would never sacrifice them. I didn't care. Because if I woke up and I walked in line with the future I wanted to create, I was already there. You won't even notice it when you're here. When you're here, when you've made it, when you got all those things you thought you wanted, you don't even notice it then because every day you get to be what you choose to become. That moment you're 100% to who you're trying to create, you're him right then. When we put a time frame on all this shit and we need it so quick and we need this thing, it don't, it'll fucking always elude us, always. There's no past, there's no future. You wake up today and you create today. You bring it in, you bring that power in, that emotion, and over and over and over in your head while you're in that pain zone, you think of your son, you think of your mom, and you say, I'm gonna make you fucking guys proud. This ain't shit to me. I know what you've been through for me. I know what I put you through. This is for me to fucking show you how much I love you. I'll go through it all. I need you guys to know this, your selfishness, those men who think they need those beers and they need to do this and need to do that, you're a bitch. You don't need shit other than to take care of your family and be the product they're proud of. So when they see you walk by, they're like, my dude, that's my dude. Best feeling on earth. I need you guys, I need it. I need you to not fall victim to this shit. It's a painful road and you ain't ready. The only time you're gonna be ready is right now.